Welcome back to Introduction to Symbolic Logic. This is lecture two. Today, we are going to talk about three main topics. First, we are going to explain what the language TFL is. Then we are going to discuss how we can symbolize English sentences in TFL. And finally, we are going to discuss a few notational conventions and other clarifications um, before we move on to the next topic. So those are the three main issues for today. Let's start by talking about the language TFL. One of the main reasons why we develop and discuss this language is because we are interested in validity. TFL allows us to understand when an argument is valid in virtue of its form. So let's start by thinking about what that means. What does it mean for an argument to be valid in virtue of its form? Formal languages differ from natural languages because they possess a clear definition of the symbols that they contain, how these symbols can be combined to form sentences, and the conditions under which a sentence follows from other sentences. In logic and in this class, we use formal languages as a model of English. So that means that we use them to represent certain aspects of English. Now, why do we do that? Primarily because formal languages, in virtue of their clarity and precision, can be studied more easily. But formal languages also simplify and neglect certain aspects of English. Now, we develop and study these formal languages in order to find out which arguments are valid. And in the last lecture, we said that an argument is valid if it is impossible for the conclusion to be false when all premises are true. And we are interested in validity because it is one of the main virtues that a good argument possesses. Now, the formal language TFL helps us to identify arguments that are valid in virtue of their formal structure. So for example, think about this argument. Jenny is either happy or sad. Jenny is not sad. Therefore, Jenny is happy. The two premises of this argument are, of this argument are Jenny is either happy or sad, and Jenny is not sad. And the conclusion is, so Jenny is happy. Now, this argument has a specific formal structure. Suppose we use the capital letter A to represent the sentence, Jenny is happy. And suppose we use the capital letter B to represent the sentence, Jenny is sad. We can then represent the argument as follows. A or B, not A, so B. And any argument that possesses this structure, A or B, not A, so B, is valid. So what we are doing in this class is we are trying to figure out which arguments are valid in virtue of the form that they possess. And that means that we must first and foremost try to uncover the formal structure of arguments. Now, some arguments are valid for reasons that have nothing to do with their formal structure. So for example, think about the argument, Juanita is a vixen, therefore Juanita is a fox. A vixen is a female fox, and so that means that this argument is valid. Anything that's a vixen in virtue of that property is also a fox. But the reason why this argument is valid has nothing to do with its formal structure. It has to do with the meaning of the word vixen and with the meaning of the word fox. Now, TFL does not help us to identify and study arguments 
that are valid for such informal reasons. Now the important upshot here is that we have already uncovered one important limitation of TFL. We are using TFL to distinguish between valid and invalid arguments and find out more about which arguments are valid, but there are always going to be arguments that are valid for reasons that TFL will not help us to understand. So TFL helps us to study only one specific class of arguments that are valid in virtue of the formal structure that they possess. In the next video, we are going to go on to discuss the properties of TFL in two main steps. We are first going to discuss the syntax of TFL, and then we are going to discuss the semantics of TFL. The syntax of a language defines which, part, which symbols are part of that language, and it defines how these symbols may be combined to form sentences. And the semantics of a language then explains and defines what the symbols and sentences in that language mean. And we are next going to go on to discuss these two properties of TFL, namely its syntax and its semantics. <laughs>